Hey guys, it's Agonis Dittimer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on Oculus Quest development. In this video, I'm going to be continuing my videos on hand tracking technology by actually adding post-processing effects to each button that we press. So in the previous video, I showed you how you could push basically different buttons. In this video, I'm going to be using the Unity event that we defined to apply different post-processing effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the video that is playing behind the scenes. This video is really cool. I'm really excited about it. I hope you watch it completely because I think you're gonna enjoy it. So in the meantime, let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing in here, which is to use the basically a similar scene to what I did last time. We're going to be pressing these buttons and instead of printing just to the log, which we're still gonna print, but we're gonna be doing something helpful, which is going to be you know, changing the effects of the post-processing that we're going to be applying to this scene. So, what I want to do is if I press the button one, we're going to be applying one effect. If I do two, it's going to apply another effect. It's basically going to be a toggle. This one is going to be on, the other ones are going to be off. And based on that, we're just going to be selecting what effects to, to do. So what I'm going to start doing is we're going to be adding post-processing to this, and I'm going to show you how to do that because this thing is using URP. I changed the rendering pipeline. On the previous video, we used the standard. This is going to be a brand new repo. I'm just going to be you know, naming it physics URP. So you can download it from GitHub as soon as I'm done. So what we need to do is we need to go into what's called the center eye anchor. This is the camera that gets used by default. There's also a left eye anchor and right eye anchor, and that's if you want to use those cameras. But in our case, we're just going to use this one as our default. So we're going to be as accessing and basically adding the, the volume to this. So I'm also going to be, let's go ahead and close this so we have more, more space. So. One of the things that we need to do on this camera is we need to enable post-processing, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I also told you that we did, I did URP here, so I'm just gonna show you what I what I have selected so that you know. So if you go here to graphics, you're gonna see that I have the universal rendering pipeline. If you also go to the package manager, you're going to see that I also installed that as well. So you can see I'm using the version 7.3.1 because that's the one that works with Oculus Quest right now. If you use 7.1.8, it's not gonna work, and it might work, but it's going to take forever to compile and actually send it because it has to compile a bunch of shaders. So I'm using this one, it's actually really fast, it works really well. So what I'm gonna do is, we already changed the changes on the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add what's called a volume. And this is a new way of adding post-processing effects with URP. You don't use the post-processing stack that is not supported by URP. You need to use the volume because that is a specific post-processing effects that work with URP. So make sure that you do that. The other thing that we need to do is we need to add a profile. So I'm just gonna click on new. And by default, that's going to be using basically the camera name to set the, to check, to create the profile. So I'm gonna use that name, I think that's okay. It's also going to create a, a folder on their scenes. I think, I think that works for me. And the next thing we need to do is we need to decide what kind of effects we want to be adding to the post-processing. So let's go ahead and go into the camera view and for now, I'm just going to select my camera and I'm just gonna go ahead and align it with this view so that we can see everything. And then we can change it back to have everything at zero, 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 zero. And the first thing that I wanna do is I want to select one effect that we're gonna be using. And I think we can use, you know, there's various effects. We can use film grain. I think that could be one that we use. So if I were to enable that and, and I'm actually just gonna crank it up all the way up. And I'm going to just use the large. The reason for that is because I want these effects to really stand out. If I don't do that, it's not going to, it's really not going, we're not going to be noticing the change. So that's going to be one effects that we're going to be attaching to one of the buttons. We can just say, you know, button one is going to have that effect. So as soon as we activate it, it's going to look like this. The other one that we can also use that I've been playing with, so I'm going to disable this, we don't need that anymore, is I could use, no, let's use, a, let's do a different one. That one is not going to, you can use channel mixer, it's just going to be red, blue, and green. I want to use something that stands out more. So we can use leaf, gamma, and gain. I think that one will really stand out. You're gonna see why. You can change the gamma, the actual, sorry, the lift. And if I increment, do something like that. I want these effects to look cool, right? So we wanna make sure that we come up with an effect that looks awesome. So I think something like that works cool. We can also change the gamma. We can make it more of like a classic look. And again, this is all experimentation, so you know, feel free to, to play around with these, with these settings. And let's look at the game. Let's see how the game would affect it. And I can do, I think I can do something like that. Let's see, let me play with the gamma here. 
a little bit more. We can do something like that. I think that works. So that will be the the one that is activated by button two. So I'm gonna basically arrange them in the order of the button. So now let's go ahead and select another one. Let's see what else we can do. We can do white balance. We can do lens distortion. I think this one will be cool. So we can do something like that. I think will be awesome to see how it looks. Can also change the scale. Can see how I change the scale. And I'm not gonna do that. I think something like that works. And let me see if I change. No, I think I think the intensity it's it's enough. We can do. I don't want it to exaggerate it here. Otherwise, it's not gonna look good. And I think. Yeah, I think one is fine. If I disable it, I'm just going to be selecting the intensity. So that's going to be for the third button. All right, let's go ahead and select one more. And I think we'll be good by working with the API. So the other one that I want to do, let's go ahead and do a chromatic uh, variation, which I think always gives the game a really cool look. Kind of see how it adds, you know, kind of like a little, a little outline on the edges. And it also adds a little curvature. So this is a very common you know, effect to add. So now that we have those four effects, now we can play with you know, changing the how this is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new script. And I haven't done this, so this is all from, you know, from me playing with this before. So hopefully this is going to work. And if it doesn't work, we'll make it work, right? So let's go ahead and go into scripts here. And I'm, going to, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new script. And I done this in, in previous implementations on, on some other videos. So I don't think that's going to change that much. So we can just do Effect Manager. And this is going to be the one that is handling the effects. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into my Effect Manager script. And we can just drag it and drop it. Game Object, drag it and drop it. And then that's going to basically attach it. So what I want this to do, though, is I want this one to have, basically, it's going to be an index. It's going to be an array of strings. And each string is going to represent the effect that we're going to be assigning. So one string might say film grain, another one's going to say leaf gamma, and we're going to be playing with this and so that it makes more sense to you. So let's go ahead and go here into the script. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say public. Actually, let's do a private. I, I like to start with private and then string. And this one can be, let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see better. And this one's going to be effects. And I'm just going to do a new string array. And this one is just going to have all the different effects that we're going to. I don't know the names yet, if they match exactly. So I'm just going to leave that blank. And we're going to be working on a new effect right here. So one thing that I'm going to need, so this one is going to be serializable. So now what we need to do, we need to add a new variable. I'm going to make it private, volume, profile. And this is going to be the volume profile. It's going to give us a suggestion there. It's going to make it serializable. And this is not going to find that for some reason Unity and VS Code are not playing well for me, but it's going to be part of rendering. Just know that that's going to work. We can also test it by going into Unity. And Unity is not going to complain because it is going to find it, but for some reason VS Code is not finding that namespace. And the way that you can test it, just to make sure that you can find it, you can see that the volume profile is there and it knows what it is. So that part is working. So now that we need that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new method. This is going to be effects. We can just say apply effect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the different components that are part of that, of that volume. So I'm just going to say effect components. And those components are going to be the effects that we added, such as the film grain, the, you know, if you have igniting, the, the different effects that we added, so, such as chrom chromatic variation as well. So you can do volume profile. And if you want to get the components, you can do just you know components. And that is going to be a, a property of that. The other thing that you can do to, to find out what this has is you can also go into your packages and basically find it that way. The, the other way that we can see is we can also do a for loop. And I'm going to say effect, or we can just say E in effect components. This way, we can basically loop through and make sure you do for each. I'm mixing programming languages here, so make sure that you do the right one. And then you can just say log debug.log. And then you can just print the name. So I can just say e that name. And let's see if this works by just trying. This is not going to apply the effect, but it's going to show us all the different effects that are currently attached to that component. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And we can make sure that this is this is going to work. So right now we have the effects, and right now there's no effects because we haven't added anything. But if we hit play, we should see a list of effects that are getting outputted by the console. Let's go ahead and look at our console here. 
And we're getting an error because we can't really run this scene in the editor, but that's really not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is going to be all these different effects that we have. So these names are really important because I wanted to know if they had a spaces in between. And it looks like in Unity, they don't have effect, they don't have a spaces when, when they run. So let's go ahead and hit play. And this is what we're going to be using here. So we have, remember, four buttons. So I'm going to change this to four. No, 41, four. And the, fi the first one, it's going to be the film, the basically the film grain. So I'm just going to say film grain. Second one is going to be leave gamma gain. It looks like that spell, make sure that everything is spelled correctly. Lens distortion. And the last one is going to be the chromatic aberration. I don't type those names very often, so it's just one B. And let's make sure that we check everything. Leave gamma gain, lens distortion, and chromatic aberration. Perfect. So the reason why I'm typing this here is because we're going to need them for when we actually press these ones. The, the other thing that I want to do is every single one of these, I'm going to make him a little bit smaller because we're going to be using, basically, we're going to be putting the description there. So the, the first one is going to be our, basically, our film grain. So if we go back into our effect manager, it's going to be this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy each and then paste it into the description. We'll make it a smaller and resize it in just a minute. And then I'll do the same thing for the second one here. And I promise this is all going to be worth it because it's going to be fun to basically toggle in between each one of those. And then the last one, it's going to be this last effect. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And now we have descriptions that are just very long, but that's OK. We can just resize these buttons and make sure you select them all. And we can do something like that. Or I can also change the text size. Oh, there we go. We don't need to resize anything. I think something like that works. And now we can see, you know, if you press this one, it's going to be for that effect. If you press this one. So the idea here is to be able to, you know, do a different action when you're pressing this button. So why not change the, you know, the post-processing effects? So the next thing that I want to do, let me make sure that I that I name this. It's going to be the left wall. And then this is going to be the right wall. I like to clean things up as I work on projects. Everything needs to be named correctly whenever I'm working on something. Otherwise, it'll drive me, it'll drive me crazy, and I'm sure it will drive you crazy too. But okay, so we have the name of the effects. We the effects manager know which effects we want to, we basically want to apply. So this knows how to go through each effect, right? So what I want to do is I want to be able to pass here what effect I'm going to be applying. So what I want to do is I want to, you know, the effect that I'm passing in is going to be the effect that we're going to be activating. The other effects are going to be set to false. So what I'm going to do is I can just do something like this. I can say, you know what, if the e that name that we have contains, this is going to be basically the name, and we can just say effect, then we can basically just activate that effect, right? We can just say activate, active, and then I can just set it to true. If the name of the effect that I'm looping through does not contain the, the name that I'm passing, basically we're going to set it to false. So the cool thing with this implementation is we can call this, and we need to make this public, otherwise we're not going to be able to access it, is that I can now use the event that I have in the code. So if I go into my button trigger, and I can actually bind that button price to the event that I'm putting in the effect manager. And the cool thing with that is now we have full control of what effect we're, you know, we're actually applying. So if I want to apply the film grain on the first button, I can call this method, I can pass this in. It's going to say, it's going to loop through all of them, and it's going to say, okay, does this effect contains that effect? If it does, then activate it, otherwise deactivate it. So that's how that part is going to work. The other thing that we don't need to do here is we don't need any of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up. And I always like to use a singleton pattern. So I'm just going to say that this is going to be a singleton. And this is just a core component that I have in my, in my core folder. So that way I can access the effect manager from anywhere, and there's only only going to be one instance at a time. And everything else is fine. The other thing that you can also do, just to make sure that you're checking, make sure that the length of this array is greater than zero. Otherwise, you know, otherwise don't do anything. So I can just say return if this is equal equal to zero. And we can also just say debug that log error. And then no effects have been set up yet. That way we, we you know, we're making sure that we're writing code that is clean. 
So everything here works, and well, I don't know if it works, but everything here is done, right? So now what we need to do, let's go ahead and go back into Unity. Now we need to bind our buttons to this effect manager, and that's what I'm gonna be doing next. So if we look at the button, we have a trigger, right, on each one of these. Now I can just go ahead and, and close this tab. And, and right now, yeah, it's cool. It shows a message, and that's fine. I think we can, we can still show a message, but I want to do something else other than just showing a message. I want to say, you know what, I'm activating. Let me go ahead and get closer. In this button, I want to say activating film grain. So I'm going to say, you know, button one, or we can just say activating film grain. And that's going to be what we do there. We can also do the same thing on the other ones. I'm going to say this one is going to be activating, activating lift. And that's going to be gamma gain. Awesome. And then on this one, we're going to do the lens distortion. So I'll just do the same thing. It's going to copy that value, except it's going to be the lens distortion. And then we can also do that on this last one. And that one was the chromatic. I hate that name because I can never spell it. Chromatic. I'm probably going to know how to spell it after this video because I have to type it so many times. But OK, so, so that's awesome. We have the four buttons. We know, you know when we press it, it's going to activate it. But right now, we don't have anything that is actually applying that effect. So that's what we're going to be doing next. And I don't know if I can do that all at once. Oh, it looks like I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate, I'm going to add a new event for all those buttons. So I'm just going to click on plus. And that's going to add an event to every single one. I don't know if Unity has these where it'll work for all of them. And if it does, this is awesome because I don't have to. And then I can just call apply effect. And let me see if this works. Oh, this is awesome. So it, it basically added multiple events to every single one, and it bound the right method. So this is cool. Except that we need to pass in the, the right name here. So I can just say, you know what? I'm going to apply this effect here. And then on this one, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste that there. I'm going to copy lens distortion, and I'm going to apply it there. And then I'm going to do the same thing there. And then that should basically take care of everything that we need to do. So let's go ahead and go back and make sure that everything is set up correctly. We have our post processing on the camera. Remember that we're not using the left and right camera. And the reason for that is because if you go to the, I believe it's in the camera rig or I don't remember what it is, but there's a there's an area here that basically tells the system where what camera is gonna be. Oh look, it's it's go, it's gonna be the camera rig. You can you can say whether you wanna use per camera eyes or you wanna use the center camera. In this case, we're going to be using the center camera because that setting is not checked. So I think we're good to go. We have everything set. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be just make sure that we have this added. I think I added it as, an, as a new scene. So this thing is called effects. It's already added. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure my Oculus Quest is connected, which it is. I'm going to hit build. All right, guys. So let me show you the results, which I think look really cool. So you can see that we're running on URP. And as I approach each button, you can see the description, kind of, you know, selecting. So you can see as soon as I activate it, we have a little bit of film grain, and that's actually the, the big particles. You can also see that I'm changing the, I think I'm using the, was it the, oh yeah, the leaf gamma in game. I can press it again, I can toggle it, and I need to fix the issue of why it's activating multiple times, but as you can see in this one, I don't really like the next one because it's, Let's see how it's augmenting everything. This is using the lens distortion. It actually makes me really dizzy. I can go back and you can see by thumbs up means uh, everything. I like how everything looks. You can see the lines, the outline of the chromatic aberration working well. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video on hand tracking technology with the Oculus Quest. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. And also be sure to check out LearnXR.io because I have a really interesting VR training and I really recommend it that you check it out. I think you're gonna enjoy it and you're also gonna be learning a lot. Also make sure to check me out in patreon.com where I'm basically posting early access source code and also early access for upcoming videos. Thank you very much guys.